fast to www.pastorpaulgold.com. Hey, have you taken a good look at the banks lately? On the surface, everything seems fine, but there's a whole lot more going on underneath. It's like looking under the hood of a car and finding a mess of broken wires and parts. The parts are loans for homes, cars, and those credit cards we all use. They're hitting record highs. It's kind of scary when you think about it. Why risk your money for a tiny 5% return when things are so shaky? This is where Noble Gold Investment can come in and help. They're like that friend who knows all about keeping money safe. They suggest gold and silver, oldies but goodies in the finance world. Plus, they got a sweet deal on this right here. One quarter of an ounce gold standard coin. They'll give this to you for a month, this month. One quarter of an ounce of gold. Pretty cool, right? Well, if you're curious, just give them a call at 877 646 5347. It's just a chat, no pressure, and they'll help you figure out if gold and silver is right for you. Go visit them at www.pastorpaulgold.com and take the first steps toward a safer financial future. The resurgence of the Al-Qaeda terrorist organization in Afghanistan is evident under the governance of the Taliban as per a late January report from the United Nations Security Council. The report highlights the establishment of eight new training camps and five madrasas, which are Islamic educational institutions, spread across the country. These training camps are situated in various provinces. Additionally, the report identifies specific locations used by al-Qaeda for the movement of operatives to and from neighboring Iran. Furthermore, it reveals the creation of a new base for weapons stockpiling in the Panjshir Valley located north of the capital of Kabul. Quote, the group maintains safe houses to facilitate the movement between Afghanistan and the Islamic Republic of Iran in the provinces of Herat, Farah, and Helmand, with additional safe houses located in Kabul, the report stated the Jerusalem Post reported. The Islamic State Khorasan province, which is a regional offshoot of the extremist Islamic State group, has been engaged in persistent hostilities, specifically targeting ethnic minorities and government establishments. Concurrently, other extremist factions are also operating within the country. In Washington on Saturday, at least one cougar tracked and attacked a group of five mountain bikers on a trail, resulting in injuries to one cyclist. This is according to wildlife officials. The cyclist successfully subdued the cougar and promptly contacted emergency services before a wildlife officer arrived and then euthanized the animal. A second cougar reportedly fled the scene, as stated by the King County Sheriff's Office in a release statement. The incident occurred around 12.30 p.m. local time on Saturday along Taco Creek, which is approximately five miles north of Snoqualmie, CNN reported. The mountain bikers reported being stalked and then attacked in the wilderness. A 60-year-old female cyclist sustained injuries, described as either claw or bite injuries, during the encounter. The injured woman was subsequently hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries. On Sunday, a man armed with multiple guns and ample ammunition fired upon police officers from inside a suburban Minneapolis residence where children were present. This tragic incident resulted in the deaths of two officers and a firefighter who was administering medical aid to one of the wounded. This is according to authorities. The shooting occurred in Burnsville, Minnesota, in a neighborhood of two-story homes. A third officer sustained injuries in the incident and the suspect in the shooting also lost his life, as confirmed by officials. Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension Superintendent Drew Evans 
revealed that there was an exchange of gunfire and the details of the incident were still being pieced together. The firefighter, who also served as a paramedic, was shot while providing assistance to an injured officer during a domestic situation. The paramedic was part of a SWAT team responding to the scene. Inside the residence, the armed suspect had barricaded himself with his family, including seven children ranging in age from 2 to 15 years old. Negotiations persisted for hours before the suspect initiated gunfire, the Associated Press is reporting. Although the exact duration was not specified, the Minnesota Police and Peace Officers Association mentioned a four-hour standoff before a SWAT team entered the home. Superintendent Evans stated that the suspect, equipped with multiple guns and a significant amount of ammunition, fired at police officers from various positions within the home, spanning both upper and lower floors. At least one officer was shot inside the residence, and around 8 a.m. local time, the suspect was then found deceased, and the family and children were safely released from the home without any injuries.